ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pants06. You can, of course, call me Derek. And today, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I've seen this done before, but I've never myself tried it. And um, a couple a couple years back, there was this big thing YouTubers did, Draw Me, well, Draw My Life. And I don't have anything like that. I mean, some of my videos, I do kind of go over who I am as a person. So I figured I'd try to make maybe it's a more simplified version and hopefully it's not terrible now I'm just gonna do this all in one tank using Photoshop so hopefully it's not completely terrible so to begin with I was born in 1987 in a little town called Ironton so here I am a baby all babied up and stuff like that here's my mom she's like holding me and stuff at a hospital and things were good right things were really good so um, you know I was born then. I had some problems, um, some problems with my heart, um, mainly due to heart murmur and my heart kind of beats out of rhythm. So you know, right then and there, my parents was kind of, kind of already having problems with that to start out with. Now my parents at the time, um, they was just kind of, they just after they got married, they had me, and um, <laughs> at that time. I had two grandparents that I didn't know, but they were really, really happy of seeing me, uh, apparently, and they loved me a lot, and their names was Zeke and Frida, and my mom, her name's Frida too, but you know, that's about where the relation goes to, but apparently they loved me more than anything in the world, and, you know, I myself don't remember these people, I, I never had a chance to actually meet them at all, which makes me sad, but, um, now, we'll go down further down the road, let's go to 1993, so, alright, there's me, there's my brother, Ryan, and my sister, Sarah, which, yeah, that's cool, it's cool to have a sister, and it's cool to have a brother, and, you know, that was here, my brother was born in 1990, and, uh, you know, she was born in 93. And anyways, let's go ahead and move a little bit further because this is just an intro thing saying, oh, here's me, here's my family. So, I don't know if any of you guys have ever had a, um, have a, your family have problems with um, uh, <coughs> divorce and where they fight a lot and everything like that. My dad was a, well, he liked alcohol. He liked it a lot, um, you know, to the point where he's always drunk. And, you know, that made us all sad. So it was pretty sad. All the, every, everybody, we was all pretty sad about it because, you know, he, he would go out, he would drink, he would come home, he'd drink. Um, you know, he'd spend all the money on stupid stuff like uh, alcohol or, you know, any other th stupid things he can get his hands on. And um, he used to sell our stuff when he was a kid. Uh, like, I had a Super Nintendo that I really, really liked. Me and my brother would play this game, like, we'd play games all the time, like Mario Kart and Mario Paints and, you know, all this stuff all the time, and we just, we loved it. That was my, one of my big first forays in uh, video gaming. Oh, yeah, that's supposed to be a TV, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's pretty uh, awful. But we had that, and we had a Sega, Sega Genesis, and, you know, one day we came home, and the... Super Nintendo was gone. It was just completely gone. Um, you know, here's our TV again. But where it was at? It turns out we found out my dad, he came in, he said, you know, it broke, so they had to take it back. But no worries, we'll get it. But it ended up getting sold. And we had a lot of stuff like that. We had a lot of things um, that we really, really liked. It would get sold and stolen or just sold for beer and stuff. My dad used to run these little. Uh, flea markets. Now, this isn't a video about me ranting on my dad or anything like that because this, as of right now, we try to have a better relationship. But, you know, those times I came home uh, from school and, you know, I'd see my mom, she'd be crying. Um, she'd be crying because my dad, he's just yelling and screaming at her and he was abusive. My art is amazing, by the way, isn't it? But he would yell at her, scream at her, and um, push her, and got to the point where he also pointed a gun at her, which was not not really a good thing. And on top of that, while I was a kid, I never really um, 
I wasn't really the popular kid in school. Um, you know, I had problems where, you know, I was fat, um, I was a nerd, and I sucked my thumb. <laughs> Here's my thumb sucking. And, you know, I, you know, people like to do that, and the things they used to call me was things like barn fart, and because my last name's Barnhart, so why not? Barn fart. Barn fart's always good. So I'd get picked on at school, get beat up all the time, just because, you know, I was a fat kid, and, you know, my parents wasn't, they didn't have, like, all the money in the world, but we got by, we got by, and it was just sad, like, coming home from school after a rough day, uh, getting picked on by these kids, uh, getting made fun, but I got made fun of pretty much all my life, but, um, getting made fun of and picked on almost on a daily basis and getting home just to hear my mom and my dad, like, be mad at each other. It was terrible. And when you're a kid, that's the most devastating thing you can probably go through aside from somebody, you know, dying. Um, <laughs> now, I took, I took, I, I, I love animals a lot. And I had this, I had this Siamese cat. His name was Mr. Pussy. And I kid you not, that was his name. And, um, you know, that was my best friend. I didn't have any, really any other friends. That was my cat. Uh, he was my best friend, and um, I had another cat. His name's uh, Chelsea. She was a Persian, but she hated me. But this cat I, I had is a Siamese cat. His name was Mr. Pussy, unfortunately, but he was amazing. He was a Siamese. Um, you know, I'd play with this cat every day. Uh, <laughs> I'd get home, and it'd, it'd immediately come to me wherever it was. If I holler for, for it, it would come from the woods. If it's hunting for mice, it'd just come up to me. And one day, the cat got really, really, really sick. Um, and I don't know what, what it was, but it got sick for almost, I'd say about a good three weeks. And, um, we didn't know what, what was wrong with it. So one day I get home from uh, school and my dad walks up to me and says, son, your cat died. So how did the cat die? Well, I'll show you. So here's the kitty cat. It's a whole lot better. My dad runs it over with a truck, backs it over. Plus, that, that's not that's not all he did. He <laughs> then told me that well the cat didn't die, so I did this. Bam! Killed the cat with with a gun. So that day, I lost my best friend at the time, which was really sad. <laughs> Again, I'm sorry, I'm terrible at the art. Um, but that's why I love cats. I mean, a lot of people know me, but they know I'm an animal person. But as soon as that happened, you know, my parents, they got a divorce um, because it got to the point where it was really, really abusive. And um, then another man came in my mother's life. His name was Rick. He was, you know, he's a hard worker. He worked hard, he loved everything that he did, and for some odd reason, I don't know why, but I I had a hard time getting along with him because we was different, we was totally different people, and it didn't take me until I was probably 18, 19 years old to realize this man that came into my mom's life after all the problems, the heartbreak, the abuse, and everything like that, he came in our came in her life, and he became our dad. The craziest thing can ever happen. Somebody can, like, after seeing all the problems we've been through, he came into our life, and he's like, you know, what, I'm gonna take care of this. Um, <laughs> so, anyways. He and I didn't get along very well, but he taught me the value of hard work, um, and it required we dug a lot of ditches and stuff like that, um, and, and he taught me the value of this stuff, and I, you know, to this day, you know, I, I thank him because he showed me, you know, I have to work for everything I do, everything I do for the rest of my life, and I have, and despite all the stumbles and pitfalls that I've had, in these last few years, I can tell you f firsthand that I've worked so hard for everything that I own, from the computer and the microphone and 
<laughs> my television, my car, everything. I worked my ass off to get this stuff, and I was in college and everything like that. Um, but anyways, let's continue here. So when I was in high school, I <laughs> I went through this phase where you know I was the the goth kid with crazy looking hair. Um, you know, I was like, trying to fit in, and that was that was okay. That didn't work out. And then we became the punk rock kids because we we liked punk rock. I liked playing in a band. And again, I'm so sorry about my you know awful, awful, awful art there. But <laughs> um, you know, I was in a band with my friends for the longest time, and our band was uh, Ground Below. We was a <laughs> Our little EP was called um, Straight From The Trailer. And we sounded like a more terrible, unattractive version of um, Blink-182. Now, whenever I was in high, like, oh, in the middle school, uh, up into high, high school, I didn't really start making friend friends until I was, say, a freshman in high school. Um, that's when I started meeting new people um, and trying to fit in to the point where I was who I was. And it was uh, I think I was uh, I like my sophomore year I finally figured out who I was. And I fell in love with this girl. Okay. Every story, everybody's story, there's a beautiful girl and uh there's, you know, there's always a beautiful girl. There's always some kind of story. And the girl that I liked, which was really quite unfortunate for me because when I was in middle school, we kind of dated for a little bit. And um, I don't know what happened. I think, I think I was a jerk because that was me just, I don't know, I was shallow in middle school, really shallow person. And I let her um, get away, basically. I, you know, I broke up with her, and then it was like in my sophomore year, I realized, oh, shit, I love this girl for some reason. And anyways, um, you know, this happened for three years. I, I kind of felt like a psycho, but I, I kind of, you know, I talked to her a lot. I really liked her, and um, it was really sad because I, like, make her notes every day and buy her stuff. I was, like, friend zone before friend zone was a thing, but I was, like, the creepy stalker friend zone. <laughs> and I regret that because that girl, she's a sweet girl. She's so awesome. She's married to one of my good friends, um, and she has two beautiful children. And, you know, she's one of those people that helped me in my life and just kind of shows that, you know, you're going to love people, you're going to like people, and you're going to get your heart broke. But that's going to ultimately change you from who you are. And the best thing to do, again, is love. Love one another. So, anyways, my heart was broken there for a little while, and I dated a few other girls. But uh, the day I graduated was really, really cool, you know. Here's me being all graduated and stuff, all happy. And anyways, I went to college. I started college at Ohio University Southern because, you know, why not? I need to go to college, and college was where I wanted to be. Now, when I was in uh, high school, I used to do a lot of digital art, graphic design stuff. And I, I loved art because art was my favorite thing in the world digital arts, uh, music, anything like that. I was in a marching band. Uh, I used to play the drum. It's, uh, well, the bass drum. And, you know, I liked it a lot. It was fun. It was really, really fun because, you know, I got to do something different. You know, I wasn't a big football player. I wasn't big into sports. I, you know, well, again, I was fat, but th back then I was kind of more, I guess I was more fit. I think near my senior, end of my senior year, I started doing a lot of exercises, started the fat diet, the Atkins diet, lost a ton of weight, and I ended up going from 298 pounds all the way down to 185, and now I'm back to 340 because, you know, the freshman 15 is a real thing, so don't let people say that's not a real thing because it's real. So, you know, college was different for me because not only was it new, it was a new experience, it was a thing that um, I've never expected to do. And anyways, I met all kinds of new friends. And we'd go to each other's houses all the time. We'd have like multiple TVs set up. And we'd be playing Halo and Call of Duty. <laughs> that is supposed to be a fucking controller or TV. So don't, don't give me shit. Um, but anyways, you know, 
I had a lot of friends anyways, and we, we don't get to talk to each other as much anymore because, you know, we're all grown up these days. We don't get to do things. We all have kids, which I don't. Uh, I'm not married yet. But I started having health problems, um, a lot of health problems, actually. Um, one day, I uh, there's a little while, I lost my gallbladder and appendix, and it put me in the hospital again bad, sad, sad time, because I was always sick, always sick, and that's supposed to be me at a hospital, on a bed, <laughs> but, um, you know, I lost my gallbladder and appendix, uh, developed some problems with my heart, were due to high blood pressure, and all kinds of stuff, and that time, um, that time I was dating this girl, she, her name, I won't give her name out, but I met her at a church, because my grandpa, he was a and I met this really pretty girl there and we started dating and um, like we dated for about a year, year and a half and I I think I gave her a promise ring or something like that but during that time there was something really bad that happened um, people that know me knows that my mom is like my best friend she's one of my best friends I've ever had and I love her, I love her to death and one day at one of the shows at work um, I got a phone call. I got a phone call because I was working at a high university's task lab. And the phone call was, uh, my, my friend Natalie came up to me and said, uh, King, King's Daughter's Hospital is calling you. And it was my stepdad. And they didn't really have cell phones. And it turned out my mom, she fell down and hit her head. And, um, see, that's, that's going to be her boo-boo. She fell down and hit her head, and, you know, they couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. So I rushed to the hospital. I come to find that my mom had to be rushed to a hospital for trauma unit because, um, here's a brain here. She had this thing, it was a brain aneurysm, and it kind of looked like Mickey Mouse in her head, and it ruptured. And they had to rush her down there because if she wasn't taken to a trauma center, she would have been dead. So we waited three days. Um, she was under in surgery, and it was like several hours long. And we all waited in this big waiting room, um, all the family. Um, and I was, I had missed a lot of school because, you know, that's my mom. That's my mom. I love my mom. I love everything about my mom. And um, on top of that, I was having problems with our, man, the girl's relationship, and it wasn't helping. Uh, just due to her friends and stuff like that, but, um, <clears throat> my mom almost lost her life, but she, miraculously, she pulled out of it, she pulled out of it pretty well, um, and it had a long recovery, and today she still has headaches and stuff, but, um, whenever that surgeon came out the door and started telling us what's going on, ah, uh, man, I, I think I about cried, <laughs> it, 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 I did cry, I cried last week, a lot of time crying, so, a few years later, um, I met this other girl. Um, like I said, some for every story has some kind of heartache, breaking up, whatever. And I met this girl, and we was together for two years. And I was about to marry this girl, and uh, it turns out she cheated on me three times, three, three different times, three, di three different people. And um, it got me to the point where I was so sad in my life where I had a gun, here's my gun, and I wanted to end my life, um, and it was really sad, it was really hard, because I got to the point, you know, I lost a lot of my friends, lost a lot of my money, um, you know, I had trust issues at that point, I was trying to get out of it, and that's the only thought process that I had, because, you know, I... I had a really nice job, had great friends, but this girl was so poisonous, but they didn't want to be around me. And um, I guess my thought was, if, you know, if I just go ahead and end my life, um, things will be pretty much gone, done for, so I wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. So miraculously, I didn't do that because I'm right here, and uh, it was stupid at the time. Uh, me and the girl broke up, and I met this girl, finally, the most awesome girl I could ever, 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 ever see, 
ever meet. Um, her name's Nikki, and she's she's my fiance. We've been together for almost four years, but we've been having a lot of problems um, lately, especially for the last couple of years. We we had a we had a house uh, together um, in town where I live in Ohio, and uh, we used to let people live in with us and, um, just to give them help. Me and me and Nikki and I are really good at helping people out. We love helping people. Um, and it's just one of those things like when you help people sometimes it bites you in the ass so we end up losing this house just due to the fact that the people um, that live with us they wouldn't pay us and it got us behind on every single one of our bills um, on top of that I was already ex having more problems uh, with my heart uh, my blood pressure um, and I had some other problems which I won't talk about um, you know, we was losing everything. I had to sell all kinds of stuff that I had, um, stuff that I really, really liked. I had a guitar, you know, the gun, which I'm glad I got rid of the gun because the gun is something I didn't really need to have. But, um, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it was really rough. And the person that ended up, um, hurting us, he ended up committing suicide. Nikki and I moved here to Illinois. It's all flat, all flat. Um, and I was hoping to get a job at a hospital again. That was, that was the plan anyways, but that didn't fall through. Um, you know, we were behind on our bills, but we're fine. We're going to get caught up on that. But, um, you know, I had a few people, uh, in my life that committed suicide. Uh, I started this thing called Bits and Pieces. Um, it was a, basically a, card shop slash game shop slash a thing that was to help people um, you know have a place to hang out as well as um, <clears throat> as well as um, I can't even get the words out get help with their anxiety you know I totally missed something here and this is the most important part and we'll go back to the end but um, there's a part of my life that hurt me more than anything so this is I'm, I'm glad I saved this to last but this is something I really really care about so there's this man in my life that I looked up to and I'll never ever ever be able to be like him um, it's my grandpa my grandpa was a preacher uh, he's the nicest person you ever met um, he would give you anything he'd give you the shirt off his back and he, he, he played the guitar all the time. He, he got me into playing guitar, and he always tried to get me into church and stuff. And you know, there for a while, I was I was going to church. I wanted to be a preacher, and <laughs> it, it, it was really fun then. But you know, I kind of started. You know, once you're in college, you kind of get more ideas thrown at you and uh, your experiences. And I kept on turning him down there for a while. Well, one day, me and my brother um, and his friends out, we went to uh, Moe's to get some burritos, and um, we get a phone call, and the phone call was from, I think it was my mom, she called my brother, and told us to get home as soon as possible, so, you know, we got home, uh, you know, we raced there, and we saw on the way, we saw an ambulance driving by, you know, and that didn't I didn't know what that was, so I didn't think about it. So I got home, and I come to find out when I see my mom, uh, my uncle, my stepdad, they're all standing there um, getting ready to leave. And apparently my grandpa was in the house, and he had this thing where he would sit down, he'd sit back, and um, he would fall asleep and uh, just on his little favorite chair. And I guess during when this was happening, he stopped breathing. His heart skipped. I See, I've got the same problem he does, where your heart skips beats. And it's not necessarily a bad thing, but um, I guess part of his, whenever he skipped the beats, um, it didn't come back. So when he passed away, it was probably one of the hardest things I ever, ever, ever experienced. Um, because, you know... He was my, he was, at the time, he was my best, like, a really good friend. Um, I loved him. I, even to this day, I still look to this guy. He was a 
uh, in he was in the army. He was uh, he fought in the Korean War, and it's really hard to talk about it because I love him. But uh, <laughs> anyways, I told him uh, whenever I was at the funeral, um, I just grabbed him. I grabbed him by his hand and I said, "I'll take care of um, uh, his wife." You know, she was devastated. It was the worst thing, just hearing her cry, seeing my mom cry. I just can't believe it. <laughs> but, um, anyways, about a year or so passed, almost two years, and, uh, you know, I, I got to see my grand, grandma. She got worse and worse and worse in terms of her health. Uh, she had, had a stroke, and she was a little, little lady, and she was always sick, and uh, one day, I get another phone call, and everybody's at the hospital waiting for her. At this point, she was un- <laughs> she was unresponsive, and we had to rush her to a a hospice because at that point the hospital could not do anything else. Um, <laughs> and we sat by her side for almost two weeks. Just two weeks of just waiting. We couldn't feed her. We couldn't give her. She was gone at that point. The only thing that was left was just her making her final uh, last breath. And uh, <laughs> it was really, really hard because, you know, we, I, I was right there with her. And I kind of whispered in her ear. It was like, I was like, you should just go. Just, you know, let go. Don't, you know, don't struggle. Don't, um hurt yourself anymore because you know you just need to stay you need to get to get to heaven or something <laughs> but um yeah it's sad but she she ended up passing away and we got to see her um she made her last breath and I think a part of me I lost like the two biggest parts of my life um right there and I don't think I think ever since then, I, I've not been that great. I've, you know, I've dabbled to the point where I was almost an alcoholic, drinking on a daily basis, every day. Um, you know, <laughs> I was an asshole. I was, I was a dick there for the longest time. I, I was just a dick, and <laughs> I don't know why people stuck with me. And I apologize to all my friends. I had, like I said, I have the best friends in the world. But um, I lost that. I lost that. So this, the time my grandma was, you know, passed away, was the same time I was going through um, the problems with the girls was cheating on me. So I had all that um, plus my grandma. I'm still recovering from my grandpa dying, and it did, that's why I had the gun. That's why I tried to commit suicide, um, and. It was really hard. It was really, really hard because, <laughs> like today, like I still think about him. And um, as you guys know, I, I, I'm just, I'm probably one of the most soft-hearted person people you ever meet because I, you know, I just didn't really care about everybody. And a lot of people will tell you, and I think that's a good trait I have. I get that from my grandma and my grandpa and my mom. Um, and I do have a temper sometimes, but I don't take it out on people. I hold it all in. Um, but here I am now with all the experiences that I have um, all the things that I've done in my life has accumulated to this point where I'm 29 years old um, I work at Walmart as a door greeter with a fantastic I think I have a fantastic resume I, I had a lot of experiences in my life um but I'm making these videos because they make me happy. They make me really happy because I can show you everything that I'm doing. I end up canceling the bits and pieces thing because I couldn't find anything to gauge interest. And hopefully one of these days we can. It did break my heart. <laughs> so the same, the, almost the same week, um, uh, I canceled that. You know, I had a kitten that died. And I was sad about that because, you know, I love cats. I just love cats. And uh, I think that hurt me really.
really bad. Uh, I want a kid eventually. I love kids. You guys all know me. I, I love kids. Um, I, I'm a big kid myself. My, my fiance and her family thinks I am. And, you know, I love every single body I've met. I, I can't say a bad word of peop the people, you know, that's hurt me in my life. I, I want people to be, you know, just good people. Um, and it's sad. It's really sad. But hopefully one of these days, if the channel ever takes off or anything like that, maybe we could redo this and <laughs> it could be a whole lot better. Um, oh my god, I'm crying because I'm talking about my grandma, grandma this awful. <laughs> but um, anyways, yeah, it's really, it's, it sucks. I miss her. I miss everybody. Um, I'm at a point right now, I, I deal with anxiety and depression, so... I might put on a happy face, but inside I'm in here. I'm actually really, really sad because I don't have the medicine anymore. Um, and right now I'm just trying to come up with, uh, find a better job so I can pay for these things. Um, <laughs> but the things that keep me happy in my life are my friends, my family, you know, my fiance, <laughs> the things I can look back now, all these goofy videos I make, the kittens I have in there, um, <laughs> for my freaking arms, so, <laughs> but, um, everything I, everything that's happened to me in my life is affecting me one way or the other, and you probably have the same thing, and the best thing to do, again, in your life is love, love one another, be friends with another, one another, if you don't like that person, don't hate that person, just you know, pray for that person. Um, just do your best. Be who you want to be. Um, don't give up on things. And like I said, we'll try to do this again. Maybe a whole lot better once we get better equipment and stuff. But that's kind of my life right now. Um, there's more I could say. Uh, but I don't want to make this completely depressing. And we'll leave it at that. But I, I was in a rock band. I was in a punk rock band for a while, so that's cool, right? Right, that was cool. Yeah. But if you guys like this video, be sh please be sure to hit like and subscribe. And, again, I absolutely love you all. Even with my bad art. Even with my terrible Photoshop paintbrush skills. I still love you guys. And I thank you for every single bit of the support. Thank you so much, and you have a wonderful day.